Uh, let's see. So on the agenda, we have uh, Envoy Con announcement. Uh, ETA is here to talk about repo kite. And uh, I put a little note about the 1.8.0 release. Is there anything else that anyone would like to chat about? Well, I, yes, I, I would like to talk about um, introducing some PRs. So I work for Cisco. I work with Ed Warnicke and I set a note out on Slack a few days ago about uh, if they're still interested in the PR to refactor FDs and on as a first stage in uh, an Envoy VPP integration. So I would like to talk about that effort. Sure, we'll add that to the uh, agenda. I think we're still happy to happy to have that. So, um, all right, I'll just add that. Uh, Cisco uh, FD VPP redirector. All right, I guess we can do the short ones first. Um, Chris, did you want to say anything about Envoy Con? Um, uh, no, just that, uh, you know, the program committee met yesterday. We finalized the uh, schedule. Uh, notification should be going out over the next couple of days. And my hope is to get the schedule online Friday or Monday. Um, so just thanks. Um, schedule will be up soon. Sweet. Um, I guess the other short one is we're, we're due for our 1.8.0 uh, release. So I made a 1.9.0 milestone and I started moving stuff out that I know is not gonna land in time for 1.8.0. Um, so I think as of right now, we should probably stop merging any particularly risky PRs and uh, we can just track um, on the maintainer side what's left in 1.8.0. I think there's like that SDS doc one and there's, there's like a couple small ones. So it's all pretty simple. Um, and we can target maybe doing that release either like end of this week, Friday, or maybe the first couple of days next week. I'm going to be traveling uh, tomorrow through Friday, so I'll be pretty busy. Uh, anyone have any comments about the 1.8.0 release? Who's who's driving it? So are you going to be driving this? Message? Yeah, I can do it. So uh, I will take care of and all that kind of stuff. What's that? You're on the deprecations, uh, the script to, you know, ping all the people about deprecations. I haven't done it yet, uh, so I might have some questions, but I will attempt to follow the instructions that are there. And if I fail, I will ask you. Oh. All right. So, yeah, so I will take care of that uh, probably early next week, realistically. Um, but but just, just a general note, and I'll, I'll drop a note in Slack that we should just be careful of what we're, what we're merging at this point. Uh, okay. Um, I guess to give ETA the most time, do you want to quickly talk about the uh, Cisco FD thing? Um, I, I, I think we're all, I mean, we're all very happy to have it. It's a useful thing. I think it just needs to get done. So um, is there anything in particular that you wanted to chat about? Not really. Uh, the PR was pretty self-explanatory. I, I will push it out. I, I will say I'm, I'm very new to Envoy and very new to all these tools. I've worked in completely different other space for my whole technical career. Uh, so, uh, like, I'm going to push it out, and I, you know, everything compiles. I have a problem when it when it links the uh, the tests, runs some of the tests. So at this point. It doesn't pass all the tests. I do not know why. I think it's a dependency issue. So I would ask for uh, people's eyeballs to point out something I'm doing stupidly. Uh, I'm starting to map out. So, so the PR is just about a generic IO handle and a type of the, a class, a new class that accommodates uh, the actual, an actual handle and different types. Um, and then following on that, I would like to start pushing some uh, PRs and getting your comments on some new, uh, a new base class that will will derive from to implement uh, Envoy VPP, uh, VPP interface. 
And uh, what we need is the ability to do reads, writes, uh, connect, you know, bind and listen and accept all that in one type of uh, class. So there's a, a few new base classes I will introduce. And uh, the, the, the whole goal of, of, of these classes is to implement what's called the uh, VCL interface. So uh, VCL is a library that runs, will run in the Envoy's base. And it implements APIs to connect to a black box on the other side, which is VPP uh, and, and the host stack. Uh, <clears throat> so basically it's, I need methods that allow me to call in, call the uh, VCL APIs. And I've got to figure out how uh, to get VCL events that come in through the uh, shared memory message queues to get them passed up into the uh, to Envoy directly. So there's a few things to look at, but there's some base classes that will pave the way. Yeah, that's fine. I, I would suggest that you start with the FD refactor. Let's, right. let's get that going. Um, I'm going to be honest, it would be useful if you could find someone at, at Cisco who might be able to help you with some of the tooling issues. Um, I'm, I'm guessing there's someone there who, who might be able to pair with you. Uh, like people will, will, will look, of course, in the community, but it's going to be best effort. Uh, so if you're having trouble just with new, new tooling type stuff, it might be useful to try to find someone to, to help you locally. Sure. Uh, once the, once the FD stuff lands and we start going into the VPP side of things, I think our main, our, our main viewpoint is going to be that as long as the brunt of the VPP code is an extension, we, we, don't, we don't care as much from a community perspective how that actually works. Um, but we'll obviously have to collaborate on any new extension points that end up being required. So um, I, I think once we land the FD work, that's probably time to circle back and do like a new, uh, new design doc on like what you're proposing from, mm -hmm. from an extension point. Sounds good. Okay, great. Okay. I, I have actually just one quick item. Um, I, hit this, I actually burnt most of this morning on this. Um, so for product gen validator is now actually really far behind in terms of uh, version and we haven't been able to bump for a while due to issues in build side. And this is actually a problem for three reasons now. The first is what was the original reason that we can't support Windows. The second is sometimes uh, Mac is now failing Mac, um, because we're exceeding the CLI limit because of the massive command lines that old version of product gen validate is generated and we kind of make changes to product gen validate to bump because of this. Uh, uh, because we're, we're, we're stuck behind. And the third is the one I hit this morning, I started to chase down some of these fuzz bugs and it turns out that what, at least the one I was looking at was a false positive. It, we were actually s somehow skipping product, the, the proto validation because of, it, it came down to basically the actual symbols um, for doing the validation where uh, we, we used weak symbol overriding and the uh, strongest symbol was being ignored due to ordering. Oh, I, hate, I hate weak linking. I hate it so much. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's such a pain. And, and the basil, it's even worse because you can't control yeah. link and, um, But so the good news is um, the Microsoft folks have actually fixed this in the latest version of Product Gen Validate. But, and so this should just go away when we bumped that, but we're still stuck behind. So uh, and I know Chris has been trying to get, get this to happen. I know Lizanne's been helping him. But this is actually a, I just thought I'd raise this because it's actually becoming acute for multiple folks in the Envoy community. So I, I'm, I haven't been fully tracking this. So like, uh, so there's a problem, some build problem, I'm sure. And like, is, yeah. is Chris working on it? Or, or are we worried that like no one's actively working on it? I think Chris is working on it. right now, but I'm not sure what the state is. I know that they had it, they had it a few days ago. And I know Lizanne's on the call. Do you, do you want to speak about that? Yeah, I think I think on last Friday I fixed the at least of the issue from Bezos side, and seems the proto plugin itself is uh, returning some error with the test framework that have in the PGB, and I think the ball is in Chris side right now. That's my understanding. Okay, okay. Um, let me. Uh, I'm just hold on. I'm gonna make a quick note. I'm just gonna send a. I'm gonna send an email 
um, and I will CC a couple of people just so we can. Who should be on that? Harvey, Lizan. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Um, well, and probably best better to send to my private email. Right. Of course. Uh, I don't know what that is, so I will talk to you offline. Okay. All right. That's all for me. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. Anyone else have any quick stuff? No. Cool. All right. Ite, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us all about Repo Kite. Hi, I'm Ite and I like kitties. Uh, that's obvious. Uh, so what I've been working on uh, on my spare time, unrelated to my full-time job, proper disclaimer, is uh, if some kind of uh, infrastructure platform where you can deploy um, and implement uh, quite easily and hassle-free bots for GitHub. Currently, it's on GitHub. Uh, the idea is that the same way that you have like Travis CI, Circle CI, and uh, other uh, CI systems integrated into your GitHub uh, workflow by means of app and just adding another file, the same should be done for bots. Uh, up until now, what you had to do is to use some kind of ProBot or something like that within JavaScript that can do everything and implement the app yourself and deploy it somewhere, somewhere to host it and do all these things. Instead, what you are, you, you are able to do with the repo kit system is just create a single file if you want in your repo called repokit.sky. Put whatever you want in there in Skylark, which is a subset of Python, which is a, a, a limited uh, subset of Python that suits this need uh, quite well. And there you go, we have the bot ready to go. Uh, it, ca it can come with batteries included. So you have uh, a lot of functions that you can use convenience to talk to GitHub, like add uh, comments, assign stuff, um, uh, even uh, uh, merge if you want. And that's what I guess we're going to talk about this. And also uh, you can use third party models. If someone uh, decides to route its own bot, which I'll show soon, uh, you'll just need to include it in your, uh, put one liner in your, in your repo kit file and there you go, you have it. So if uh, there are no questions, I guess I can show it. Um, so I, I guess, before demo, um, yeah, it, like I think, and it would be good to talk through, um, like whether this is open source, uh, you know, what the long term things are. I think, I think that was Harvey's concern. I was under the impression from talking to you that it was going to be open source, um, and I, I just, I, I think, I, I don't think it's necessarily problematic that it's closed source, but I think there's things to discuss around. I, I kind of share Harvey's concerns where um, if we're going to stay with a closed source system. And with that said, I, I think this is awesome. Like I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this. I think this is going to save us a ton of time. Um, so I, you know, I would love to see this move forward, but I, I, I was going to talk to Chris about this also. Um, and I just wonder if it's going to stay closed source, if there's a way of, you know, doing some basic agreement such that we could either, you know, allow Google security people to like look at the code or like allow a third party audit from CNCF to actually look at the code. Like, I think that would make a bunch of people more comfortable. Um, so, you know, we don't have to like talk about that entire subject right now, but I, I just wanted to raise that. Um, and just see if you have any thoughts or see if anyone else had any thoughts on that, just because I, I feel like that security aspect from the closed source perspective, particularly for a new thing, it would make people more comfortable if like we could get people access to it just for code inspection. I completely agree with what you said and I sympathize with everything you said. So as I've written the email that I sent out yesterday, I would love people to do an audit on that because it will be good for everybody. Now, the reason I'm not currently putting it open source because I want to see if I can make some money off it. I mean, 
that's one of the of the goals uh, of my goals here if i can't make money or uh, if i can find a model in open source that i can make money as a side thing uh, i'll see what what we can do uh, i would love all third party audit and i guess uh, I said to you, obviously, nobody passes this audit on the first time, and any fixes that are needed will be made. Uh, I remember from my time we were working Google, how they worked, and it was wonderful. Um, yeah, so sure, I'm up to it. I'm up to any involvement. involvement. Yeah. I mean, my, the other thing that could be interesting is if, I mean, if, if you are pursuing, you know, an actual commercial use case, is if the, and this, the, this is a conversation which probably needs to happen with Chris and CNCF offline, is if there was some sort of, you know, essentially a support contract. So we have essentially, you know, SLO <laughs> on, uh, yes. on the service. And then obviously you don't want to run an SLO if this is just a hobby, mm -hmm. but, uh, and they carry a pager all, all day long. But mm -hmm. it, it would be good to essentially get, get to that point where um, everything, all the incentives are aligned correctly. Yeah, yeah. I know. I want to get to that state and I want to know what, how we make it a bit more... Uh... I would say uh, it's, uh, official, I want to see what's involved and I'm not really sure, I'm exploring stuff. What I appreciate about Envoy is the thing that, you know, it's the first use case, hopefully it has my full attention. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, like I would, I would like to see this move forward. So we've, we've got that email thread going. I was actually going to reply to it. I mean, I, I, I think we can be pragmatic here. It's like, you know, of course it's, it, it's bots. Like if the SLO isn't there on day one, we can just turn it off. Like it's not like a total crisis. Um, with that said, I think everyone has concerns, like not that we don't have the same problem with using Circle CI of if we give right access, which I, which I think some of the more interesting use cases like fixing DCO and a bunch of other things would, would require right access. Um, that gets a little more scary and that's where just like having the ability to have security people look at the code or like do an audit um, and just to put on my negotiation hat um, you know since we are obviously working with you and doing a service to help you like develop this stuff and get publicity and a bunch of other stuff it'd be nice to talk to CNCF about like whether we want to, it doesn't have to be a complicated contract, but like, you know, could we get like a like to like work with you on this and like have security people get source code access? Like those are the small things that I think would, would probably make everyone comfortable. Um, does that sound reasonable, Chris, to just talk about over, over email? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're open to whatever a project kind of decides, you know, you have to, we're fine with proprietary tools and so on. It's just, you have to decide as a project. And from like personal perspective, perspective uh, enabling something that kind of has like right access is, uh, you know, definitely potentially sketchy. Uh, could lead to interesting situations, but um, you have to kind of decide as a project. We're happy to, to fund um, an experiment, kind of see how things go, but uh, it's, re it's really up to you, so. Yeah, I mean, this, this seems promising to me, and I feel like if it went well, I find it hard to believe that all of the other CNCF projects wouldn't pick it up too. I, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's too useful. Yep. So I, I, I feel like if we can make this work, um, I think everyone wins, like all of the CNCF projects wins. Ite wins by, you know, helping with some development. Uh, so, I, you know, I think if we can just make everyone comfortable here this could work out really well um d does that sound good to you harvey like if we uh, yeah, talk yeah, about that over email yeah that's a, that sounds great i mean you know just to give you an idea of where we're coming from you know i'd say google i um we, we have a bunch of security engineers who known as isc and they don't even trust github so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and we're not well, signing it's really surprising that google trusts github by the way we're not signing every commit or anything like, like the others, things that we're definitely not doing that we could potentially be doing as a project. But. Yeah, um, so we, we, we have our own issues to solve just in, in moving code from GitHub internally. And um, I, I don't think this is, makes it that much worse, but we should just keep, yeah, be cognizant of, uh, of, of that and think part of that story we need to tell ourselves internally. I mean, maybe concretely we start with like a very small experiment, maybe like a couple of bot or specific things that may not necessarily require uh, right access in the beginning. And, 
you know, CNCF's happily to kind of, you know, fund, fund that experiment and kind of see how it goes. And then if things are going well, we could expand scope. Maybe it's yeah. generally. Yeah, yeah, we, we can. So there's actually, I think there's four bots that I think will be useful. And one's already been written, that's the assign bot. That can, where you can just assign an issue without having to be a maintainer. And um, okay. I mean, that, 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 that's been um, done already. I think uh, similarly, I think uh, uh, assigning a review or requesting a review, which is like a separate verb essentially in GitHub, uh, mm -hmm. would be a cool thing to add similar to that. The next is kick CI or basically mm -hmm. run CI tests. And okay. I think uh, it is looking at that. Um, there's two ways to do it. You can either do a, an empty commit like we do it today, and that mm -hmm. requires right access. And then maybe possible, I think, just invoke the circle CI yep. API directly, which is being used to hand out some um, a an API token for that. And that doesn't, I think, require right access. Is that correct? Yep. So I actually, as news here, I actually succeeded contacting the Circle CI and kicking without MP commit. And uh, I didn't invest a lot of time in it, but there are some uh, queers day, but it is very possible as long as I get the Circle CI token for Envoy, if you generate one. We can do that. Yeah, I mean, the one nice thing actually about using the Circle CI API versus the uh, versus the empty commit is that we can kick only the test that actually failed. So it so it saves it saves CI resources and saves time, which would be really nice. And it also um, doesn't pollute the PR. Yeah. Yeah. The other one that would be really nice um, is to set is to set labels. Um, that that would also be great. Um, there's 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 tons of them and like I feel like once people learn how to write like learn how to write this stuff, um, just being able to go through and like, you know, implement Stalebot but like have it be part of the you know part of the repo and like have it be in Skylark like that all, all just sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What? One that will require right access, which I would find useful, would be able to as a maintainer, be able to tag a review as ready to merge as soon as CI tests pass. Yep. yep. That would be nice to have, but I don't, think, I don't think it's the most, it's not the highest priority, but it's, it would be nice. Yeah, that's actually one of the main reasons I want, uh, I want in the beginning right access because I was talking to people and that's the main feature that, <laughs> that people want. Just merge it when all the tests pass and mm -hmm. I got my LGTM or whatever you define is uh, ready. Yeah, I mean, they're like, I just, just sitting here and brainstorming, there are so many small ones that yeah. I can think of. Like another one is for a maintainer to be able to not only request review, but one of the things that like when I'm looking through all the PRs is sometimes it's hard to tell if people have actually worked on it, like since I've, since I've asked them to, to, to do something. So like even being able to set a label and then have that label be auto cleared, like if there's activity on it or something like that. So like if there's a, a commit or a comment or something, and then I can just scan it and like, I would have done all my reviews and then like there's a label like needs feedback. And then like the needs feedback label gets cleared. Like when someone actually does something like that, that would save me time. Like that would be fantastic. And, and like, these are all things that just seem like they don't seem hard with the type of system that, that you're, you're building. Yeah. It's actually what you said just now. It's really easy. I can implement it right now in front of you if you want to see, uh, if the demo gods will allow, um, we're, uh, unfortunately, I, I think we're almost out of time, oh, wow. uh, okay. but, but I mean, this, this, this conversation has been awesome. It's super useful. Um, I, I think we can either, if you want to come back in two weeks and like do a demo, then we can do that. Yeah. Um, or feel free to actually just make a video and like we can just send it out to the lists and people can just watch it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's say in two weeks, I'll show you everything. Uh, if you can send me a list of the most useful read only stuff that mm -hmm. you want uh, to see, I will be very happy to start working on that. I also think, uh, what is his name? Um, CM Luciano? Yeah. What is full name? I don't remember. Christopher, I think. Uh, Christopher M. Luciano uh, wants to deal with this as well too, like to put some stuff in. Okay. Uh, the, main, the, the main things that prevents me, not prevents, but actually uh, inhibits the uh, use of other people is I don't have a sufficient docs of everything yet. And that's something I plan to invest very, very, very heavy in. 
So I think maybe uh, Chris will be the first tester of this stuff. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, so why don't, why don't we do this? Um, since we've got that more private uh, email going on between you and the maintainers and, and Chris, um, I was going to reply to that today anyway. Why don't we just talk a little bit about like what kind of agreement or trial we would actually want to do here and see if we could just get some basic agreement. And I, I think what would make everyone comfortable here is just for me and I think for Harvey and Google is just making it so that like, like authorized security people can look at the code basically. And cool. I, I think as long as that is the case, I don't know that anyone cares about it being open source or, or not really. I, I will very welcome it and very welcome any suggestion how to fix it. Obviously I will do it. One thing that prevents it, I think currently like uh, one issue that I have is that whenever something gets uh, modified in, uh, in the Skylar code, I actually create, or got event, I actually create another process where I run it there. Uh, I would love to run it in another container or another pod, uh, but I don't have enough money to do so. Yeah, sure. But, so that's something that will help if I have more credits and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's, and, and that's something where I think, like if we got a little trial going with CNCF, yeah. we can probably yeah. actually get you some money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, if you need access to machines, we could definitely hook you up. So that's not. Yeah. A problem. Just GCP credits or stuff like that, or yeah. even if you want on we, the, um, we're in the community cluster, we could point you. Um, I could send you an email today about how to sign up for that. You'll just have some straight up bare metal. <laughs> so oh, okay. not, it's not the cloud, but. Oh all. yeah, I, I, it's very easy for it. it takes a lot of my, uh, time to me just to work with GKE, but we'll talk about the things. Okay. No worries. All right. We'll go all right. Take care all. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.